Hey, what is up guys? So today I want to talk a bit about uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s, the upcoming series that's coming out potentially in April, and of course the, uh, the card sets itself, but uh, we're going to start mostly about the actual plot of the anime instead and then move on to a bit of the card. So if you guys don't want to see more of the plot, then skip ahead on the video and you actually talk about a bit more cards there, uh, of the new cards over there. So to begin, it looks like the town is starting off with a uh, Go Heart Corp style. So similar to like the Leo style from Arc 5 and similar to obviously uh, Kaiba from the original series. But in this case, it's focusing on the Go Heart Corp style. Uh, very interesting, they're actually starting off with a, another alternate realm in this case. I mean, it's going to be very difficult to continue on with the previous series, but for this one, to start off with a realm like this, it seems like that typical kind of villain that you might get that that might turn out to be your rival. So we have here uh, the Goha Corp City that Yuga and his pals live in. Alright, very interesting picture there. And then we have here the Mega Corp Goha runs the metropolis called Goha City. Goha Corp doesn't just control dueling, they also have a major say in the daily necessities of its city's citizens, such as food, clothing, and even shelter. Wow, that seems kind of, uh, kind of like a dictatorship there. Uh, let's take a look at Yuga's room and apartment, so obviously you can see there, uh, looks simple, but I don't know, it's hard to argue if it's futuristic or not, I mean, it's a research room or a road laboratory, but even then, it doesn't seem like it's too futuristic there. It's like, yeah, it's he's developing his own invention that he calls roads, but even then, it's not too much information that we're getting out of it. And then finally, we also have uh, the roads or his so-called inventions here. Uh, we've discovered a mysterious blueprint hidden in the lab, and it appears to be a drone, but it's full of expressions. Its true identity is actually... Okay, so that definitely makes things very interesting. A uh, bit of a small theory, I actually think that the identity of this particular drone might be someone we know from the previous series. If that's the case, it could be very, very fun to... Uh, see some kind of crossover happen for the first time. Alright, so next I actually want to talk about how the game state actually works here. This is definitely very interesting for Rush Duels, of course. So the basic rules for this is that the decks are 40 to 60 cards, so it's the exact same as our standard formats. We also have a starting card, a starting hand, sorry, of four cards. Definitely very interesting, that's similar to Speed Duels, but our starting life points is still 8,000 makes sense however if you look at the actual dual zone very interesting it looks like the typical speed zones that we have uh, so it's going to be uh, a much more compressed version so it's very interesting to see that the deck size is still very large uh, but that being said you have monster zones spell trap zones deck zones uh, graveyard field and extra deck uh, let's see, different traits here. You draw a lot of cards. Basically, draw until you have five cards in your hand during your draw phase. That is insanely crazy, but if the cards are going to be restricted in some sort of way, I could understand why they would do this. Next, we have the player in the first turn draws one card as well. I mean, that's okay. It's not too big of a deal. Second effect, or well, not second effect, sorry, second, another rule is if your hand size is five or more, you still draw one. So that's definitely nice. And there's no limit to your hand size. Continuous summons, you could also normal summon or set monsters from your hand as many times as you want per turn. Uh, keep in mind that you only have three monster zones to use, so obviously that comes down to a certain limit there. Uh, but with that being said, it only makes you speculate that these monsters will have pretty lackluster effects or rather simplistic effects uh, more catered towards newer players uh, to get into the game or the younger audience. Uh, but with that being said, uh, it still does make a lot of things interesting with the dynamic of the rules. So the procedures here, we have the draw phase, main phase, battle phase and end phase and then you go on to your opponent's turn. So no main phase 2, but 
this is obviously meant to be much quicker so I'm not going to complain about that and then regarding the effects of the monsters all right so the effect of a face up monster on the field can only use its effect once per turn while it remains face up so this will be a condition on all rush deal monsters for the entire format so all right that's going to be interesting so the first one here is uh, sevens road magician level seven dark spellcaster effect monster 2100 attack 1500 defense uh let's see so the requirement is you can activate this by sending the top card of your deck to your graveyard okay interesting so the effect is going to be it's going to have a cost and if this is going to be for all monsters this could be very interesting uh, we have here the effect it gains 300 attack for each different attribute monsters in your graveyard until the end of this turn I mean that's not the best but you know for a boss monster it seems pretty disappointing to be honest uh, but you know with the simplistic effect the other monsters that come might be pretty bad so we're actually going to look at a few of the first new cards here from the rush road so we have obviously seven roads magician we have uh, rush dragons Dragiers. Uh but we also have here a new card we have Brave of Dawn Light Across or Lead Across. Uh, level 7 Light Warrior Effect Monster, 2100 Attack, 1500 Defense. So the requirements for this is uh, two monsters that have spellcasters in your graveyard to the deck to, the act to activate this. So its effect is special summon up to two monsters, level 5 or lower spellcaster, from your hand or side of the field in face up position. Or oh, from your hand to this face up on the field uh, in face up position. So that is definitely very nice, allowing you to bring up monsters very easily. Uh, you could then also go with tribute summonings as well. Uh, but with that being said, uh, it is definitely a very nifty effect there. And we also have a new Max, a new Axe Warrior. It's called Max Warrior, level 7 Earth Warrior, normal monster, 2400 attack, 1400 defense. And it's strictly just a pure normal monster here, so it's definitely very nice. A warrior who wields axes, he has trained his body, pushing himself to the limits. His attacks that swing two axes are quite strong, so definitely a uh, very nice flavor text here. But so far, you know what the interesting is? Uh, the interesting thing is that every single monster I see right now is a level 7, uh, so... I just wonder how things are actually going to go about. Another thing I got to say is that, you know, the cards, they look nice. They don't look bad at all. The only problem is it feels like a completely different game. It doesn't feel like Yu-Gi-Oh anymore, you know? And while you could say, yeah, it's a different format, it's just such a new card design that it may as well be a new game entirely. Uh, so that's how i'm gonna actually take it that's how i'm actually going to view rush deals from this point on i just think it's a completely different game that's separate to Yu-Gi-Oh. but just because of how the design of the cards are even the gameplay itself seems so different it's it's like having Yu-Gi-Oh capsule monsters if you guys actually remember those or dungeon dice monsters you know it's like there's side games that are just so different from the from the regular game and you know speed duels didn't have this problem speed duels kind of had this similar thing it was just a dumbed down version of the game but this one feels like a completely different game here uh, but even so definitely tell me what you guys actually think about these are you guys actually going to be investing yourselves into this obviously i don't want to like draw too many conclusions i do want to give this a go so I'm gonna wait it out and I'll see what happens when the game comes out. For we know it might actually be really fun, I might actually be invested in this but for now I can't say for sure, nothing's really getting me excited for the game itself, the only thing it's really the card designs and the potential uh, rules that or the gameplays that we might get out of this but even then it doesn't seem to interest me as much as it does anything else so with that being said uh 
definitely let me know what you guys think about this. It's going to be really weird. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you next time.